All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to SEO Unmasked, number 20. I think that makes about a little over five months. Hard to believe we're still going. Traffic keeps coming. Glad to have more people watching. Uh, it's January 4th, 2018. I'm glad to have you with us. I'm Garrett Graff, and I'm joined by a special guest this evening. Jared Hobbs. Yeah, back in the house. Um, uh, Steve's a little under the weather this evening. I think the, the red wine got to him or something, and Vin's on vacation. So we're a little impromptu. Uh, I guess the first order of business, the 24 Hours of SEO charity event is looking good. Um, what is it, the 25th? It starts. We're going to start, I'm going to start 9 a.m. Central Time on January 25th. We have a, well, looks about halfway filled up, maybe two-thirds, with some pretty big speakers. Uh, Jared might be able to make it if he's able. Um, yeah, Mike Blumenthal, he's pretty well known in the, the local space. Um, David Markovich from Online Geniuses. Sam Romain is going to be talking about online reputation management. Jason Brown's coming in from Serpu, possibly. Uh, we got Joe Sinkwitz coming in from uh, IntelliFluence. Sorry, I think I, I didn't mute myself today. No, I can't hear you. Okay. Uh, Paul Shapiro from Search Wilderness. Zach Hay is going to be talking about how to leverage Reddit for SEO. Um, Craig Road is going to be coming in about the physical web and beyond having to do with. I forgot what they're called. RF card type things that you can be implementing into like restaurants and physical stores. Yeah, RFID yeah. chips, RFID. beacons. Yeah, beacons. There we go. Yep, that kind of stuff. Vin's going to be talking about outsourcing work to writers and some tips on how to streamline things better. And Steve will be talking about outreach, obviously. Mark Preston is coming in about a kind of logical approach and a, a mindset to SEO. I think uh, a lot of people get caught up in a lot of stuff and he's going to have just some general thinking tips to how to clean up your work and maybe be skeptical of some things that are out there and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, we, uh, the t-shirts have been designed. Uh, I think we're just going to sell them for 20 bucks. I don't even know what the cost to us is. It's probably like 10 bucks a shirt. So for every t-shirt you buy, 10 bucks or whatever, the profit goes straight to St. Jude's, I believe. And then I think we might be doing a raffle as well. So if you buy a t-shirt, you get a raffle ticket and you might win oh, some okay. consulting time. Consult oh, five, five shirts. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Consulting time, buy some links, or you get some links. I think we're going to give away some links probably. And if everyone else, I think I think we're going to make it optional for the speakers to give stuff away, but hopefully they'll uh, be some good stuff. I think I think we'll probably commit to 10 links again like we did for Charles Floats giveaway. So I don't know. what that That's 2018 pricing. That's 1700 bucks. So there'll be some money thrown around for everybody that's contributing. And... Yeah, um, case study update for the candle site. Things are not looking good. Major issues with Shopify. Things aren't getting indexed. Um, one of the whole reasons that I was basing it on Shopify was because it's supposed to be a easy entry for people that don't know what they're doing. Get e-commerce sites set up, no problem. Yeah, it's relatively easy to use. But the second you get from like level one and you start thinking about anything on a logical scale, it's absolutely useless. You're not allowed to access your robots.txt file. Um, you can't access your XML sitemap. So I'm having an issue. All sorts of shit is getting blocked. I can view the file, but I can't even go into live chat or call them and ask them to make edits to it to stop blocking stuff that I don't want blocked. So some things aren't getting indexed. It's kind of ridiculous. Probably going to have to make a move to WordPress. Um, yeah, we've been throwing, I think we got like 20 links thrown at it over two months now where it should be ranking for some really obscure stuff. But it's just turned into a nightmare. Have you ever done anything with Shopify, Jared? I haven't at all. Yeah. I, I've heard of several people 
complaining about indexing issues. Uh, and it, it always boils down to something in the robots file. Yeah. yeah. That sucks about the uh, the links because you can't. You're not going to be able to 301 those. Oh, maybe. Did you buy the domain? Yeah, I bought the domain. I didn't. Okay. So I can. Uh, should just be able to make a new, you know, put it all in WordPress, just make the page title the same, and there's a yeah. slug. But, you know, it's just one more fucking thing you got to do. It's, yeah. It's disappointing to see, like I said, it's awesome. It's awesome for entry level, obviously. If you're someone that's not technologically literate, really easy to get set up and going, but from any kind of SEO level, it's really now annoying that you have no control and you can't even ask them to change your file but I mean I get the point of them locking it down because yeah. that's gonna reduce ninety nine percent of <laughs> headaches but yeah that's pretty cool though it's like the uh, the e commerce web two you know what I mean yeah the, all the Shopify sites that I've seen that seem to do well have like a maximum of three products they're like color variations you know what I mean and there's yeah. not necessarily a blog on there do, do, do you think people tend to try to rank Shopify sites? or? I honestly don't know. Um, this was my intent to try to rank it. Um, basically, it's, it's... I don't know if you know, it's a, we're going to be drop shipping candles from a friend of mine named Garrett Letrano. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, that French last name. He has a candle company. And he was looking for drop shippers. I was like, cool, let's... Uh, I've never done drop shipping. Let's try to rank a fucking e-commerce site in Shopify and see what happens. And I'm going to just do a case study about it. I know nothing about Shopify or drop shipping. And I guess I've learned some things that I've just talked about. But, like, it, it seems, it's relatively easy for a, from what I can tell, a re relatively high search volume niche. The competition is very strong. So hopefully no one watching this decides to get into it, but... Or maybe if you just make a WordPress site, it'll rank. But it should be ranking. I think I feel like if I just made a basic site on WordPress, it would have ranked by now for some long tail stuff. But damn you, Shopify! Yeah. Uh, Sam Romain wants to see some. I think we have three general designs here. Let me figure out how to put them on the screen. Maybe if I open in the web browser. One, open that one. Open that one. And this one. Alright, so the t shirt designs that we've, okay, that should be on the screen. We have that one. Uh, I'm just going with Fiverr. Pretty interesting little one. I don't, I don't think they like this one, but it's kind of cute and whatever. Uh, next one we just have in red. The search never sleeps around the clock. And this one, search never sleeps in green and black. I don't know. I think it's kind of a cool little... I suppose there's probably like a minute delay before it actually hits YouTube. Yeah, it just popped up. Okay. Yeah, the... Uh... That's pretty nice. A little, I don't want to say anime characters, but the gray one, the search never sleeps. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, that red one's. And the green one. Nice. Yeah. So if anybody wants to vote, we'll take that into consideration. I, I guess um, early next week we'll finalize it. Or maybe even... Steve's going to be doing a separate site and a huge landing page for it, so maybe we'll do a, a big poll up until like the last few days and people can vote on what it should be something like that um, Wait, so were these little characters supposed to be like a Moz character? I can't really see uh, I, I don't know <laughs> to be honest with you um, I think they're just general little drawings I guess I don't know if uh, Steve took up took it up upon himself to do the design work, or uh, to go to Fiverr. So I don't know if he told them to look around or. Um, 
Steve probably drew that. <laughs> this little cute seek. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But yeah, the event should be good. Uh, yeah, Sam, if you need double extra large or whoever needs it, should be able to accommodate whoever. I would guess we'll just run it through what's one of those big sites like Cafe Press or something? Yeah, Zazzle and all that. Yeah. So, I mean, it will probably pay an extra couple bucks a shirt, but whatever. And then we'll just print off the exact amount that we need ship them out however it works I don't know yeah I think that's straight drop drop shipping essentially from them okay on, yeah. on demand one at a time like you said though that's I would I would lose the two bucks per shirt to accommodate exactly the sizes that yeah yeah I, I think it just makes sense it's not like we're gonna be printing off 10,000 of them so yeah I did that decades ago one of my first projects on the internet actually in a like you said, you end up you end up with boxes of leftover shirts because you find out so many people don't need the extra small or the or the extra large or double extra large. Yeah, those are those are the people requesting it the most too. <laughs> you find out like ninety percent of the people who say that they're gonna buy something, they never buy it. You can't you can't even really poll for sizes or anything. Yeah, yeah it's always weird. Um, but I think overall it should be a pretty good event. Um, there are some other. Steve said there was a couple other big names. Um, might be getting some people from over at Search Engine Land or something or nice. something like that. I can't exactly remember, but it should be fun either way. Raise a little money in the new year and um, yeah. Other than that, do you have any? news off the top of your head you want to talk about or should we get going well you asked me seven minutes before it was time to get live <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I really don't if something pops okay. in my head I'll okay. go butt in yeah go ahead um, yeah so first up on the news you know normally um, I think we've been pretty harsh on Neil Patel but we saw that he had covered something that He's a little ahead on the curve for the most part. I guess Pinterest is now offering viable pins where, you know, you got tons of people pinning shit. You never used to be able to buy directly from Pinterest. And like you said before the show started, they finally found a way to somewhat monetize the platform. And um, the article mentions there's, on average, Pinterest users spend more money per order than users on any other social media platform. And I guess it'd be silly not to incorporate a viable pin when it's the most performing direct social media network. So it makes sense that they're getting around to doing something. And uh, I think the average Pinterest user has a higher income as well. Hmm. Upper middle class, it seems like. Okay. I can't remember exactly. but I think that sounds right. Yeah. Can you imagine being... Because I don't know if you can algorithmically do this, but imagine being the employee or employees who sit there and insert buyable pins into every product. Because it says 2 million people pin product pins each day. <laughs> yeah. Sure, so they're going to have to have some kind of like a machine learning image recognition or something. There's going to be a lot of mismatching a bit. Yeah. That would be one mundane job to have to go through every day and be like, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> right. But someone's got to do it. Um, oh, I got to put the link in the chat. I'm all off kilter. It's been a couple weeks. Now, I, I mentioned this before, but I, I'm not sure if it's right. Did he, did Neil Patel redesign his site? Uh, I'm pretty sure he did recently, yes. I mean, I think it looks nice, but I'm willing to bet this is a, a theme. I'm going to... Well, it's called Neil Patel. <laughs> they, you know what, though, man? That looks just like every other uh, yeah. every other SEO. Yeah. Ever Looks since like Rank, Rank XL and all those started adopting the same theme, and uh, it looks great. Yeah, it looks nice. But it 
to like people like us, it just looks like something I can throw together in Divi relatively quick. Yeah, you start to recognize them. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. It works. There's one man. This is off topic, but you know, authority hackers have a pretty big following, and man, I see little affiliate sites out there on the internet all using the exact same thing. Yeah. God, you know, it's just awful. And for me to like publicly come out and say that happened is just like. You know, the man, there's, I don't want to say plausible deniability, but you got to cut them some slack because, like we're saying, me and you stare at websites all day long. We, we recognize themes by name almost. And, uh, you know, yeah. other people can't, they can't necessarily do that. Yeah. Man, there's, not, there's not always all the red flags. I see some pretty, I see some PBNs out there that use like those little 150 by 150 ads and, <laughs> set, you know what I mean? They exchange the links with each other that way. And, uh, there's not always all the tells. Yeah. You are right. The Neil Patels. Yeah. Yeah, so I just went through it with the site with them, and I'm like, I mean, 10 seconds in, I was just like, um, this is fucked up. This is fucked up. You know, there's 10 links in the sidebar that are totally irrelevant to this site. Like, come on. In all lowercase. Yeah. You know, it's like match links. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on, guys. Zip codes. And I shouldn't have to be getting bitched at by clients because I didn't read the report because I was in a hurry. <laughs> kind of my fault, but, you know, it's like, uh, embarrassing. But you have to have humility or whatever Yoda would say. Uh, anyways. <laughs> Chatbots. That's another article. Steve out on the block here. Um... I rarely see them incorporated very well, unless they're like really advanced ones. Um, do you have much experience with them, Jared? No, I I operated a forum way back in the day. Uh, they had a a posting bot that would slowly learn, um, but my my partners in that got pissed off and didn't like it. <laughs> But I think I've seen these recently pop up on Facebook. Yeah. Are they? Yeah. That's kind of interacting with. Them, but yeah, um, it's starting to seem like it's becoming popular, and a lot of the SEO groups are talking about it. Um, using the chatbots to use Facebook Messenger, obviously, and to just do the initial stages of getting a target to talk to them. But it also seems everyone is so lazy they don't put any time into what's actually going on and they are just atrocious and people get pissed like it's so obvious like you know even i will tolerate it at some point like hi this is alice and you know i'm looking for a new truck this is alice from such and such dealership and obviously it's a bot and it talks to you for like five sentences before it says okay i have your information i'm gonna give it to alice the real alice but like as some of these examples are just like holy shit, like pretty bad. You know, I get it. Like, if ninety percent of your customer service points of contact are, what are your hours? Yeah. You know what I mean? What's your return policy? The automating that's fine, but yeah. man, the the last place you want to butcher an interaction isn't customer service because we're talking about returns. We're talking about uh, customer retention, uh, churn rates on on a SaaS. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Man, when you're when you're dealing with the actual person who busts their wallet out and gives you money, I would spend the time, or get the employee to spend the time. You know, yep. human to human interaction, regardless yeah. if they waste eighty percent of their time. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think I don't know. Maybe if I'm just that old school, but it's like. I don't see in my lifetime ever getting away from human to human stuff. Even for me, like maybe the stuff you just mentioned where it should be like someone just types in what are your hours? Yeah, fine, who gives a shit? But I, I don't know, I'm just. I don't you know, know so most of that stuff should be handled correctly with your web design too. Like you should obviously have your FAQ. Yeah, or whatever. that's a good point. Yeah. And they should be visible and intuitive to find. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just I don't see a place for AI bots in customer service. Now, as far as like entertainment and trying to sure. uh, 
trying to manipulate him and get him to say ridiculous stuff to the next person. Yeah. All that, I get it, but... <laughs> yeah. I mean, you take, like, a big site like Amazon or PayPal or eBay, like, you have to go through hoops to even contact them for support. Like, they make you look at the FAQs. They make you look at other questions or... Yeah. And then if you still fuck, you know, then then you can call them or chat them or whatever. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Poor planning, maybe, and people aren't hyped up about the bots. Man, some of this stuff should stay below the surface until there are significant advances. Yeah. Um, I mean, one day it'll be applicable. Yeah. That time is not now. And I'm sure some of it is like... They want to slowly introduce the populace to the idea, mm -hmm. but I don't want I don't want to lose ROI on my own campaigns or whatever. I don't want to be the guy taking the hit to introduce right. the concept. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you know, to me, that's an interesting point because do you think that means you're going to see a lot of huge companies like IBM or Microsoft or whoever? that are really investing money in this and then in five years, ten years, there's only a handful of big companies that have actually mastered AI or on the path to master it. And they just kinda control the market in that sense where maybe you lease their AI script for something. If that makes any sense, I don't know. No, I know what you mean. Slowly they will diverge even further away from the rest of us. There are these an entire tier, exponential tier away from us, but if they master AI and the rest of us don't, then it's... Yeah. You know. you know, it's funny, I know a couple of good friends of mine that are older than me, they're, they've been heavily involved in computer science their entire lives. They're in their 50s, both of them. And I remember when I was a kid, I'd go over to one of my buddies' houses, his dad, and he would use neural networks to design trading algorithms and stuff. And I just remember even in the late 90s, early 2000s, how advanced neural networks are now, or how, how uh, advanced they were at that time versus now. I don't know, it just seems like there's a disconnect between usefulness and maybe, obviously these two guys are geniuses, but there just seems to be like a disconnect between usefulness and the logical application to them where maybe there's not a higher standard or something like that. Because when I talk to them about it, they just laugh at stuff like this. Like, yeah, I was doing this 15 years ago. I don't know what's holding people back. And it's like, well, is it market adaptation? Is it... I don't know. I mean, I think a lot of it is that these neural networks were never truly... I mean, we don't have any true artificial intelligence, despite everybody throwing that term around. Right. They, they're really inflexible, and they require a shitload of training. Like, yeah, I don't know if you've ever do. watched the ones where it's like, we're teaching a bot to play Mario. No, and it you, does. You watch it yeah. die 10,000 times, and the yeah. only input is how far to the right it can get. Yeah. If it encounters an obstacle, it jumps. Yeah. You know? I mean, you, um, you can't even train that for something like... Uh, 4x or whatever you know what i mean you can only simulate a shitty version of the live market and then if you like i was saying you go ahead and release that into the wild and put your money online you're not going to end up being very happy <laughs> yeah it can be crazy and i think that's the problem is when you when you're dealing with true variation random randomization or you're dealing with with humans where the the human Intellect right. and cognition yeah. is th throwing out just shit out of left field. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're humans. We do such irrational things that we can't even attribute anything to. It's just emotion. How do you define emotion? Right. And there's there's just no way for a a linearly you know a linearly based bot with static responses is is yanking out of a database. Yeah. There's just no way. Mm -hmm. You know, at this point. Now I do believe they'll they'll. It, they'll crack it open somehow yeah. eventually, but for sure. Um, next on the news list here from your stomping grounds at Dizzo Builder Society. Um, the Maccabee update, the Fred 2.0 update, what I call the more bullshit sites got penalized update. Um, 
I know a lot of people are bitching that scholarship links got hit really hard. There was a lot of people in the Facebook group saying they got manual actions against them for scholarship links and bad links. Overall, I pretty much still saying what I've said for the last six months on the show. If you have a shitty site, it's getting harder. And if you're not going to compete with people that are putting effort in, probably not going to be able to compete at all. So that's my take on it, I guess. Here's my take. Who was it as Search Engine Roundtable? They such opportunists. We're going to yeah, name this Mac, Mac, yeah. Maccabees real yeah. quick. Uh, but I think he, I think he had that one, just on a post-it note, just waiting for some kind of update so he could name one. But because uh, it's going to be good search traffic. But I think the case is there's no such thing as Maccabees. I think what we saw was a panda refresh, an offline panda refresh. Even if they're saying it's live and rolling, I think there was a penguin aspect, and I think there was another aspect of Fred involved. Okay. I think I think panda is what accounts for the. Uh, I don't know if, if I shouldn't just speak to you, but to the listeners. So people are saying that there's a the main thing that got hit is keyword permutations, which is basically um, well, an example from this thread is so you're you're targeting every local zip code for every um, profession. So Los Angeles plumber nine oh two and Los Angeles plumber nine oh two one one and then you jump over to locksmiths and you and whatever, right? Those are doorway pages. And that's yep. something that Panda has been taking care of forever. For years, yeah. Yeah, so this is not new. Mm -hmm. And uh I don't even know how professionals not to talk smack, but search engine roundtable, give me a break. You know this is not new. <laughs> and and then people talking about the uh the scholarship links was completely because th that website, 10 beasts. Did, yeah. you, did you hear about all that? Yeah. Stuff? Yeah. So to the listeners, some guy builds a site called 10 beast, puts up like 10 pages of just shit content. Yeah. One of them ends up ranking for best routers, 2017. So he makes like 50 grand a month, flips it for like 600 grand. And then as soon as he sold it, Oh, so the thing was like, he started telling everybody, I did this with scholarship links. So everybody starts talking about scholarship links. Uh -huh. Then he sells it. It gets penalized. And it turns out, he yeah, he had some scholarship links, but the scholarship links aren't what tanked the site. The fact was he used a bunch of PBNs on that one on that one post. And uh, so everybody was attributing it to scholarship links and saying Maccabees scholarship links. Everybody saying Maccabees <laughs> keyword permutations. But it's obviously either a manual penalty or it's Penguin. And then it's banned. Did you happen to see the analysis that Matt Diggity did of that site? Of 10 Beast itself? Um, he did. He put it on all the Facebook groups he's a part of. And I skimmed through it. 10 Beast was a big part of it. But I didn't know the background on 10 Beast. I know the guy just sold it and all of a sudden got penalized. And everyone was attributing it to the scholarship links. Um, Diggity kind of tried to do a little analysis saying there was no clear indicator because he pulled a bunch of people at the same time and got penalized. Was it outreach links? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use quotations here because the circle that follows around those types of people, those aren't real outreach links. We're just outreach links. They, what they mean is PBNs. Yeah, paid links or PBNs even, which would surprise people probably watching this that no way I paid for outreach links, but I got to put on a PBN. Um, it was, did you get a penalize, a penalty? If you got, if you use PBN links, if you use scholarship links, if you're using outreach links, if you were doing this or that. And he broke it down in a way where I can tell that, you know, he's an electrical engineer, you know, statistics. He, he used a pretty good way to mask the information by using statistics to his favor. And all he could really say was, oh, it was the scholarship links that killed 10 bees. And then he did a disavow, prayed to God, and it came back for the guy that he sold it to. Yeah. Uh, it was the gist of it. And I don't know, it's just... <laughs> you know, here's the thing. I've recovered quite a few penguinized sites and manual penalties. If it, the only way you're going to recover as fast as that guy did 
is if it was a manual penalty and yeah. if you controlled the majority the of, of the bad from. links. Yeah. So yeah. So if they're coming from Web 2.0s, you can go con- you control you can take the links off in PBNs. That's the only way you're going to get it. Because I think I read somewhere too that he made a huge effort to take hundreds of links down, and they took him down. No. There's no way. Yeah, so it's like, well. This guy, this is the same guy. The only reason we're even talking about this site is because he he tried to use it to jump into the guru circuit. He wanted to become a high-profile name. That's why we're talking about scholarship links and the fact that the site was sold and then penalized. The, the fact is... He did some controlled spam where he had access to remove the links. He removed them, and the, and then he, and he copped to the fact that he was the one who did it. Because I've done this, and it works. Yeah. That's the only way you get the penalty removed in three days. Because if it's if you have to send out emails, you got to send out one email. you got to wait yeah. three to five days. Yeah. And then you Just to, for them to look at it, and then they're probably not going to answer us the email again. Yeah. I've done it, too. And then, but you got to uh, do it for the sake of Google to yeah. show them that you put in the yeah. effort. And yeah. You can't do it in three to five days. It, you, we're talking a couple months to show yeah. that you put in the real effort. I mean, yeah, that, that mortgage site that Steve and I have talked about that we run, that we used for experimenting back in the day, and now I'm rebuilding it. The, the, the first Penguin penalty we got, like fucking A, it took me like two months to disavow... Or before that, obviously, reach out to every fucking link that we built and had Sam, whatever his name is, do. And every other shitty link, can you take this down? Oh, no response. Email again. You know, yep. a week later. Blah, blah, blah. You know, it takes time. There's, like, there's no way you just upload a disavow file and three to six days later it's fixed. Especially under a manual review. They're just, they're going to look and be like, you didn't change shit unless you had right. access to get those links taken down yourself. And, well, the fact is, nine, you're not going to get any of those links removed. It's just not going to happen. Because most of it's going to be spam. Nobody's even looking at the sites. The, my point is, Google doesn't care if you actually get the, site, the links removed. That's what the disavow is for. But what they do care about is, did you actually put in the work to show that you're a nice, reformed SEO now <laughs> instead of a black hat? You know, yeah. they want to see that you str- you struggled. So if anybody's saying that that site recovered because they only disavowed some scholarship links, that's BS. You can you can pull the site up on all the, uh, I don't know which backlinks, which ones you can look at, like Ahrefs or Majestics and Open Site Explorer. And there's that other one, URL link profiler that nobody's blocking yet. You can see all the PBNs he used. So, I mean, this whole fiasco of scholarship links is just, man, the whole industry is being misled because somebody jumped to some conclusions. <laughs> Yeah. And everybody else is a bunch of followers. Yeah. Yeah, it's... I mean, obviously you need to take into account your own SEO strategy as a whole, but it's it's tough. You know, and I'm, I'm probably not the best person to talk about stuff in general anymore because all I focus on is link building. And I do my on-site and I do my other stuff the way I do it, but it's definitely not optimal. But, you know, I, I see stuff like this, and it's like, well, how many more people are going to get fucked over, you know? And then, and then they go out and start selling SEO, and it's, like, that much harder to get a SEO contract these days. And, cause... This, man, this goes right back to what we were saying before we went live. It takes 10 seconds of just critical thinking to realize <laughs> this guy did not rank for best routers with some scholarship links. I mean, it's obvious that he was doing some... Some kind of PBNs, and they were blocking the, the crawlers. You know, I he, built... Because he did in record time. It wasn't like this was a five-year-old site. He built the site, and bam, he was ranking for yeah. the routers. I've built two .edu links in my life, and they are not scholarship links. They're not resource links. I, like, straight up convinced two universities to cover a story. It wasn't even a story. It was, in, it was we were working for a drug and rehab drug and alcohol rehab facility at the time and I got them to cover um, what this facility was doing and like being able to do that kind of stuff versus scholarship links obviously works but I don't know it's just I like doing fun stuff like that yeah I, I recently I guess sometime early last year you know I wrote about a legal 
thing that happened in my vertical, and and some uh, some EDUs picked it up. You know, they're like lawyer sites. Yep. Whatever slash law, and uh, I mean, it's not a magic. It's no magic bullet to help you rank just because it says EDU. Because the fact is, most of that stuff is student maintained, and there's no moderation. Yeah. I mean, and Google knows that, and Google zapped the power of EDUs quite a while ago. I mean, I think at one time it was. You could get quite the significant boost out of some some EDE links, but I don't think that happens anymore. I don't think that's been happening for at least a couple of years. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's definitely where they're placed because you know you can see you can buy these .edu links for like three bucks, where it's like this subsector of the school's site where, like you said, it's student ran and the student's getting like some publicity for it. He thinks. But it's really just some black guy, hot guy throwing some shit on their forum or something. And oh, I got an EDU link. And I personally think that Google can filter out that shit, like you said. And there is a difference between being able to get a link from a university's health department versus the health department's student forum slash, you know, backslash this submit your own article bullshit. Right. And it's not easy to get those links. And I'm not saying, like, when I say I've built two in my life over a decade, it's like, yeah, it's like once every 1,000 times I try, it comes out. <laughs> so it's tough, but I think it's worth it. I think you're right. Like, if you get real close to the root domain, you're like one subfolder away, and and it's in the navigation. Obviously, it's going to be a huge boost if it's contextual. Yeah. Even if you end up on a student page that's contextual. But, like you said, if you're in the forum or if you're in some kind of little web 2.0, you know, self-registration section, Google can filter every bit of that. Most of it's built, you know, you know, on Apache servers where you can do the old, the forward slash tilde, yep. and you can si sign in with a username. You know, most of that stuff, those student sections, Google's filtering all of that. Yep. Same thing with author accounts on all these uh these big publications everybody's been selling for 500 and a thousand bucks google whacked all that stuff off a long time ago and I, I saw proof i think i mentioned this on the show before but i've seen where google will de-index just a specific author account i mean they're on the ball yeah you're not you're not going to fool them with any of this stuff if you end up on an edu resource page that's going to be fantastic if you're on an edu resource page that's underneath an h3 header that says scholarship opportunities <laughs> google's going to Ignore it. Because, by definition, those are temporary anyway. Scholarships for 2018. Right. Well, that's, that was kind of like the whole point of something I talked to somebody about. And I'm like, yeah, so the scholarship is for fall semester 2017, right? Why do you still have this link up? And why is the spatial here? It's like, well, we want to... The idea is we want to show that our company is a, you know... Uh, financial gift, you know, we're helping out our local community, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, well, why don't you look at what your other competitors do? And they say, what do you mean? And they go, okay, this competitor in your town has a scholarship page, but it's constantly updated. They take the old scholarships down, even though it's the same scholarship every semester, it's updated with who won it, which school it went to, or whatever. Constantly changing. It's never like the same 2017 page fall, 2018 page. You know, kind of what someone normally would do, but I don't know if that even makes sense. I should rephrase it. Anyway. Yeah. Let's move on. I yeah. can rant about this stuff yeah. all day. Yeah. Um, next on the list, a bunch of digital publishers bought cheap traffic and later found out it was fraudulent. This seems to be something that's coming up a little more often in my circles. Um, people are obviously talking about whether or not traffic from organic search has any effect on rankings, click-through rates. Um, For this, sure. this article isn't necessarily about, excuse me, organic search, but there's big huge companies, Forbes top 100 companies that are getting duped, and it's kind of disappointing. 
there's an entire universe. I mean, obviously, we know about the deep web and the dark mm-hmm. web and whatever. But there's an entire universe of just affiliate sites where they rip each other's sites, five, you know, five article sites that look legit. In a, but basically, they're approved for certain campaigns like skin care or whatever. And, and they buy all this shit traffic from all kinds of places. And when you land on them, you can get trapped in that little loop and not even have a clue. You're in a universe of, of unindex, unindexable websites. Not me or you, but some old person, you know. Yeah. They get caught up on a cycle of seven search uh, <laughs> <laughs> domain landers with just keywords on them. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's wild. My uh, my grandpa definitely falls into that kind of category, which this uh. Yeah. This, yeah. It's not. This is not just like. I, I I haven't read this art article, obviously, but uh, I would I wouldn't even be surprised if this isn't a spin job itself. But most of the time, it's not. We act. We got duped, and we didn't realize we were buying fake traffic. Most of the time, they're in on it. Like yeah. I don't know if you know, CNN got busted because yeah. their traffic is way down. Oh yeah. TV visibility, but no, they got well, busted buying like yeah, they 11. Got, we used to pay on some of our huge national contracts. Part of our contracts included. Um, these are contracts where my NDA has expired, so I don't want to talk about it. We allowed for buying traffic on networks that CNN privately disclosed. As in, we were getting paid to send traffic to CNN or other huge news conglomerates. And it wasn't even fake, but you had an option. Like, do you want to buy this many extra views to go there or something. It was just absolutely ridiculous. And they come out as a news outlet saying, oh, we had no idea. Oh, we had no idea we were buying traffic from this source. And it's they like, knew damn well they bought 11 yeah, million Chinese yeah. bot visits. Because, and I'll tell you exactly what they're doing. I was just reading, uh, when, when I read these magazines, you know, you get to the end and it's like, you can see their distribution numbers. How many they gave away for free, how many got on newsstands, blah, 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 blah. How many they ship out as free promotions. But they'll give away uh, as many as they sold so they can boost their, their subscriber numbers yeah. because then they can justify charging the advertisers yeah. a lot more. That's what CNN's doing. But not only are they defrauding the real advertisers, but they're, they're defrauding the ad networks because, let's face it, the CPM ad networks, there's a whole bunch of them that are in their walk, that are in CNN's waterfall that me and you will never see because we're from the U.S. and we have real right. browsing habits. But bots will load up some shitty CPM ad. They're not checking for what what's the country of origin, what's the referrer, no. is there even a host name attached? They don't even and, and CNN's collecting money off that. And they know what they're doing. And like you said, they come out with a little spin job where they pretend that they're the ones who got defrauded. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's a horrible And then it's like you wonder why the American people have such lack of faith in, in the media. It's like we're at that point where it's, well, a lot of us know you're doing this shit. And then there's well, also a lot of people that don't believe it. So it's a matter of time where it's... Well, and, who, and, and what governmental agency is equipped to oversee that kind of fraud? They don't know. And then the people that they could hire that would be capable of doing it, they're not, oh, they're not going to do it because they no. can they can be affiliates themselves. Yeah, Break they'll find in. yeah they'll find a way to make money off of it. <sighs> I mean, it is still the wild west, and you got old money just defrauding people left and right. Is that even a word defraud, or am I saying that wrong? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a term. It's a legal they're, term. They're frauding people. <laughs> I've been accused okay. of defrauding somebody, and I was proclaimed innocent. Yeah, I wouldn't believe that for a second because you get too enraged over other people doing it. <laughs> or it could be the sign that you you were one of them. Oh, oh that's a secret, isn't it? <laughs> um, next in the news, Tom Waddington from Twitter. Sometimes we see in local Google search that they just like to fuck with you. Let's say you take a lot of time and effort and you spend money on a professional photographer to come take pictures of your local business and you want to use those pictures on your GMB listing. Seems reasonable, right? In this case, probably not. Um, there's an HVAC company in Florida that 
in one of their blog posts or something, they used a picture of a melting ice cream cone on the sidewalk, and they said, don't let this happen to you. Call us. Make sure your AC is working good. But Google thought that was a good picture for their map pack. How many leads do you think they lost? <laughs> because there's a melting ice cream cone when someone's expecting in Florida during the middle of summer. I don't want to see melting ice cream cone. I want to see um, icicles, probably. So, I mean, this just takes us right back to the machine learning yeah. that we were talking about. It's just too linear. It's going to grab something. Is it, is it Google's fault that you signed up for their service? What do you think? What do you think if we looked at this, went to this, this site, found this image? Do you think it had an alt tag? Do you think it said melted ice cream? And what do you think if it said melted ice cream, do you think that would change anything? I think it probably said alt, te alt <laughs> equals quotation best, best air service uh, or air conditioning yeah. service in Florida. Yeah, and then it yeah. said description equals quotation best <laughs> air conditioning service. You know what I'm saying. I mean, they're, they're probably at fault here. I don't know. I yeah, I, I, I obviously have no idea either. I think I, I think it's funny. I'm an asshole. Uh, but I mean, I think there's a high I can, I, well. Yeah, I can uh, definitely see someone getting a little overzealous and every image on the website, best HVAC Tampa. Right. And, uh, yeah, I can see that happening. But if I someone, mean, if you, if you think about the way a computer is going to interpret all this data, where what they're going to grab from, and, and then you just look at this image that that they've posted. The name of the business is called the Comfort Authority. So <laughs> if, if you're yanking that out of the H1 tags, you've got no indication of what the business is about. I mean, obviously you're going to run through and see HVAC here and there, but if they're if they're if they're not putting keywords in the right places, and then they're putting them in the wrong places, and then they're stuffing their alt tags and stuff, you know, which yeah. they probably hired some amateur SEO. Yeah, I can see Google getting confused, and yeah. I don't know who to blame for that. I'm a big fan of my H1 tag, uh, best HVAC in Tampa, Florida. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I mean, I would at least say the Comfort Authority dash. Yeah, yeah. Yep, I agree. Um, one other Twitter news item we have is: Did you notice some celebrities got? destroyed for no reason for their name i read that yeah uh, i never followed up as to, i saw the original news come out but i never followed up as to why they would get destroyed i didn't either but i have my suspicions i mean if i search i think tom cruise is one of the examples if i search tom cruise i'm not going to click on his site because i know it's it hasn't been touched in a decade there's likely bro like a broken twitter sure, widget okay. on it and stuff you know versus landing on his Wikipedia page because I want to see his filmography. Yeah, that makes more idol. sense, yeah. So I, I think it boils down to, like you were saying earlier, I think definitely click-through ratings, time on page, uh, pages per session, all that matters in terms of your ranking. And Google Google has access to it, even if you don't have Google Analytics. Yeah. And I, oh, I yeah. think that's what you're seeing here. Yeah. Um, you know, I remember when I read it, my original thought was... Maybe one of these celebrities was really silly and didn't have confidence. I need to be ranking number one. And someone threw a bunch of PBNs at it or some shit. And all of a sudden they got like manually actioned. Because, I mean, when you think about it, if you uh, search Charlie Sheen, you'd probably expect his site to show up like at least in the top five or whatever. But you have a really good point where a lot of these celebrity sites they're not getting updated with their latest work it's broken links, all flash. sorts of shit yeah all sorts of shit like that and it's like well even though that is Charlie Sheen's site and it might have had a lot of search intent is it actually a good result to serve to the viewer and I can see where yeah it's weird but it kinda makes sense at the same time so Interesting. Um, other than that, unless anyone in the, the chat has something to talk about, 
And did you want to talk about this last item below the... Oh, oh that's right. The, uh, um, as some of you may or may not know, there was a large breach in the SEO community. Uh, Charles Float covered on it mainly because it happened largely within a, a lot of people that circle him, and I'm not saying he had anything to do with it, but there was someone that was kind of prominent in the Black Hat community that had been buying up a lot of plugins and then offering them for free or whatever as a gesture of goodwill. You know, here you go, use these plugins for free now. But it turned out he was using the plugins to inject links for his clients on other people's sites. Um, Charles Float did a pretty good job of covering it. He outed the guy very heavily and his partners. Um, I should probably pull up the link in case people haven't seen it. Yeah, I've not seen it. Now, was he... Was it one of those cases where you, you get everybody to update the plugin and then it yes. has a... Yeah. So, so he wasn't able to to do my SQL injections into post content. The update allowed him to do that. Okay, so it wasn't just a credit link on the widget. No, was, he could do site-wide anything. He could totally backdoor the site. Gotcha. Um, yeah, let, let me go to Black Hat Community on Facebook here and make sure I can find it. Proper, I think it was in the proper PBN group that he published it. Um, Xmas giveaway. Really good post I seemingly missed from Nick Eubanks on I'm from the future. That's interesting. <laughs> uh, why why wouldn't Charles pin this float or uh, why wouldn't Charles float pin this post to the top of the page so that people can find it really easily? What what is the website that that you're on? Black Hat Community. Um, I see it all on Facebook. I'm just in all the. Are you on uh, Facebook? No, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, it's on Charles Floyd's blog. That's so. I guess I should look there. Charles Float blog. Uh, Lionsville. That's weird. Does Charles Fulton and I have a blog? I thought he had a blog. Oh, man. He had charlesfloat.com, I thought. Or Cause, .co. Because um, if you even Google Charles Float. No, I'm sure he's de index <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, fuck. No, here it is. Uh, charlesfloat.co.uk. Backdoor. I can't. For some. Oh, he's got something weird going on, man. You can't even scroll down. Oh, really? Unless. You, like he's got a, a frame within the browser. Anyway, the top post, backdoor plugins. Oh, I got it working for me. I'll, uh, I'm gonna, I'll drop that link inside the... Yeah, the I got her. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so basically... Let me figure out this douchebag's name that did this to everybody. Unless, unless he, I don't think he took it out. But. James Bryant. Uh, WordFence, that's a plugin I don't know. I use on the WordPress sites. It's pretty decent. That's the name of the guy. He, uh, Richard Forrest, Gareth Bull. Do we know their screen names? I don't know. Not, not that it matters. I don't care. I don't use plugins. Yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, it's disappointing because it's obviously taken advantage of a huge part of the SEO community that relies on them. Whether that's good or bad isn't really the point, obviously. It's just, here we are. You know? There's an extra level of scuzziness doing it to other SEOs. I mean, it's shitty all around, but yeah, you know, there's some weirder extra layer on top of all this. Yeah, yeah so... Who knows? It's weird. Not is cool. this even legal? No. <laughs> <laughs> it is not. You know, man, uh, as a side note for anybody listening, if you're going to use plugins, if you're not a developer, you're not capable of recreating some of the functionality that you want from other plugins, dude, don't stray from big ones like 
you, obviously you're going to be able to trust Yoast because Yoast that's how that whole team earns their livelihood. You can you can trust stuff from Aut Team Automatic because they they make WordPress itself. Uh, you, you know, there's there's some situations where it's obvious you can trust them. If some hotshot on a black hat form, which means you're you're already ethically compromised in the first place. Don't just grab some random ass. You know, let, let, I'm gonna say a point that I've been holding back for a while. I don't know why the, the quote unquote black hat community is so up in arms. Because you know, if you're actually doing legitimate black hat stuff. This is the kind of shit you're doing to other people, anyways. But now it's a problem that someone did it to you. Well, I'll tell you why, man. <laughs> people, because people have equated Black Hat with just blasting out link spam to unmoderated blogs. You're, you're which exactly right. Yeah. Versus where me and you know what Black Hat really yeah. means. It means hacking. It means illegal stuff. It means going into yeah. meat space, yeah. into real life and socially engineering events. Yeah. You know, like you said, pe people don't know that. They should, and they shouldn't, <laughs> they shouldn't be surprised yeah. at what happened. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. Just be careful out there. Like uh, Jared said, there's a reason why some of us don't use the big plugins, but if you're just starting out, there's no reason to avoid them. They're going to be very safe, and especially like Jerry said, their livelihoods depend on them being safe. They're constantly doing their best to make sure they're safe. They need people using them, and if they're not unsafe, if they're getting hacked, they don't make any money, so it's just like anything else in the world. They're, they can usually be trusted. I guess, but right. The, the there's they have too much to gain. Yeah. But let me throw this out there for anybody listening. Uh, the prob the only problem with the, with the big trusted plugins in these companies is they're so addicted to and interested in transparency that as soon as a security flaw is discovered, the first thing they do, like dumbasses, is go announce it. Yeah. And push an update and announce it in the update and in the README and they put it on their websites. There's no information embargo. What they no. ought to do is push the update, not say shit about it. And then once they see 75% of their user base has updated, then they can say, this is why we did it. Yeah. So, so my point is, when you get those little notifications in your web, in your CMS that says a plugin needs to be updated, you need to look at that shit because... There's probably a security flaw that they just announced to the entire world, and then it's a race between the bad guys and you. Who's gonna Who's gonna infect your site first, or are yeah. you gonna click update first? Yep. Yeah, you know, it's just approaching stuff with common sense. Um, be skeptical. You know, I'm not saying you have to just dis distrust everybody. Obviously, but ask questions, look around. Um, other than that, I think that's all we have on the block tonight. Uh, thank you for joining me, Jared. Uh, keep the consistency with the show. Should be back in full force next week, hopefully. I think Vin's back from vacation, and Steve will be off his bender. <laughs> Steve. But, yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your mom, email Steve your silly questions, get them all pissed off. We'd love that. Uh, we'll see you next week. And uh, take it easy. Later.